Previously, I showed you how to sniff out 433 MHz signal from various devices. This is the device that we use. The only downside is that it's a USB stick and must be plugged in to a host like a laptop or desktop. Today, we'll take a look at this Lily Go device that can do both receiving as well as transmitting 433 MHz signal. It is basically a small computer itself, so there's no need for a host. You can put the Lily Go basically anywhere you want. For power, it needs 5 volts and 1 amp via micro USB cable. There is another small cable you can use to power it up, but I prefer micro USB cable. And of course, here's the $1 bill for comparison. On this side of the board, there is a small LCD screen to show various stats, if you want. With a Sharpie for size comparison, you can see how crazy tiny this board is. Here it is from the side. This board uses the ESP32 chip, so you can clearly see all of the pins. You can add more sensors, such as temperature sensor, or even run WLED to control LED lights. Inside the box, all you get is the board, the antenna, the small power cable that you can plug into this uh, little socket right here, and two header pins. My board comes in this tiny plastic casing. I went ahead and drilled two holes in the case and used the whole thing to protect the board. One hole on this side for power, and another bigger hole for the antenna itself. I guess I could 3D print a case, but that does not make any sense because this is more than adequate. With the lid closed, I can hang the setup wherever I want. Pretty slick, right? The first thing you have to do is plug in the device, plug it into your computer. I'm using a Windows laptop, plug it in using a micro USB cable. Go to this website, docs.openmqttgateway.com Go to the left hand side, click on upload, upload from the web. On the right hand side, scroll down a little bit and then choose LilyGo RTL 433. Click on connect. If you don't know what your port number is, go ahead and open device manager and then expand on ports. Look for anything that says Serial, so for me, it's COM8. Select port 8, and then click on Connect. It's going to start doing its thing. Click on Install MQTT Gateway. Erase Device, click on Next. Once installation is done, Click on Next, and then you can close it all out. On the device itself, all you see is the OpenMQTT Gateway logo. Go ahead and jump onto your phone or mobile tablet. With your phone or tablet, go ahead and open up the Wi-Fi settings, and then you should see the OMG LilyGoGo Wi-Fi access point. Click on it. Keep Wi-Fi connection. Open up your Firefox or any web browser and go on to this website. Click on Configure Wi-Fi, choose your local Wi-Fi network, enter in your Wi-Fi password, enter in your MQTT server, the password. The base topic can be whatever you want. I'm going to rename it to be ESP433. So I know that this is the device that it's coming from, and then click on Save. If all is good, then this device is now on your network. I'm going to use my desktop now to finish installation. It's so much easier from here. Here, you have all of the basics that you saw earlier, such as Wi-Fi, MQTT, the gateway. There is this option called Configure RF. Active Library is using the 433 MHz, and this is kind of interesting. It looks like you can tune the 433 MHz to some other frequency. I haven't tried this yet because I'm perfectly happy with this frequency right now because all of the uh, 433 MHz devices in the house uses this. Let's go back to the main menu again. If you click on Console, you can see all of the raw data. In my hands right now, I have a door sensor, 433 MHz door sensor. 
Every time I play around with opening the door, it will send a code. Here's the code that I mentioned in the previous video whereby you can use this to trigger an automation. If you want, we can use the MQTT Explorer and view the code this way. And here we go. This is the uh, USB RTL 433 MHz from the previous video. Closing a contact does not do anything. It only sends out the hex code upon opening the contact. Let's go all the way down to the same sensor. And here's the code again, 70104. Let's try to close the contact and then open it again. There you go. You can see that it flashes, meaning that it's working. All right, we're done with setting up this device as a 433 MHz sniffer. If you need additional help on setting up automations based on 433 MHz sensor, please refer to this previous video. Hopefully this video helps you out. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.